Hey, hey, everybody! Welcome back to my channel. I am Laura, also known as the Outer Mama. I am so excited to have you guys here today. We are going to chat about ways to survive being a police wife in 2020. For those of you that don't know, I have been married to my incredible husband for over 16 years, and he has been a police officer for just about 12 years. So we've had a little bit of experience with this whole police family, and 2020 is... It's crazy, especially for police officers and their families. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. So I wanna give you a few tips of what has helped me survive 2020 and um, hopefully some things that can help you guys too. Let's get started. a couple of simple things that I think are pretty obvious, but we're going to say them anyway, just in case. First thing that I recommend, avoid the news. We all know that the media does not show the whole picture, that they take situations and blow them out of proportion or twist it to make it whatever they want it to be. We know there's not a lot of reality happening in our news right now, so just don't watch it. Nothing says that you have to. And I found even before this, as I was watching the news, anytime something would happen in my husband's city, my anxiety would skyrocket because what if he's involved? And if he is, is he being safe? What if one of our friends is involved? What's going on? Did they find the bad guy? Did they help the victim? Like all of these things were going on in my head and I, I couldn't find peace anymore. Just don't watch the news. And if you do happen to read a news article, because occasionally I will still do that, whatever you do, do not read the comments on that news article. There are so many keyboard warriors. There are so many trolls. There are so many people who do not have a clue what it is like to be a police officer, and yet they are really good at getting on their keyboard and screaming really loudly about how the job should be done. Even though they have zero experience, zero training, and have never even done a ride along, so they have no idea what they're talking about. Don't read what they have to say. Their opinions mean nothing. Tip number two, be very careful with social media. I am still on social media a little bit here and there, mostly for my channel. I don't scroll social media like I used to. I just don't. Occasionally I will comment on something that I see that a friend has posted or things like that, but it's just not worth it to engage in social media. A lot of people are saying a lot of things and just like those commenters on the news articles, most of those people that are the loudest have zero experience. They have no idea what our spouses go through. They have no idea what it's like to be a police officer. They have no idea what it's like to make life and death decisions in a split second. So why give them your time and your energy? Do not engage. Another big part of that is People's minds and hearts are rarely changed through Facebook or through Instagram or through discussions online. It just doesn't happen. People get on there and they just want to scream their own opinion. And if your opinion doesn't perfectly match theirs, then you are wrong and you are bad. And that's it. That's all they want. They don't actually want an, a full conversation and they don't really want to learn. So don't engage. Don't give them your energy. Don't give them that power over your heart and your mind and and your life tip number three trust your officer trust his training they go through hours and hours and hours of training and that's in the academy but then progressive training throughout the years they have so many hours of training that they have to do outside of just the academy and they are constantly having things refreshed and reminded and things adjusted and tweaked so that they can stay safer trust that because it becomes automatic for them they do scenarios and things so that when they get into those situations they know what to do one of the huge things that helped me to be able to do this to trust his training was going on a ride along i did that a couple of years ago i don't know how comfortable you would be with doing a ride along right now or how comfortable your spouse would be i know mine is totally against me doing a ride along right now but if you guys are comfortable with it do a ride along so that you can see what your spouse does, so that you can see how he interacts with the other people that he works with, so that you can see in those high stress situations how quickly 
his training will kick in to keep him safe. It's incredible to watch. If you can't do a ride along, find out if their department will allow you to watch body cam footage. I haven't seen much because the only way I'm allowed to watch body cam footage from my husband's department is if it's something that's been released to the public. So I've only seen a handful of cases that he's been involved in, but watching how quickly his training snaps right in and how quickly it goes from a hundred insane to completely zero because he's handled the situation and the guy is no longer a threat. Seeing how well he can do that is so helpful and so calming. Number four, this one is important and I think it's overlooked a lot. Spend time together. Focus on your relationship. Go on dates on his days off. Even if your date is leaving the kids at home and going to the grocery store, just the two of you, or running errands and stopping to, you know, get a soda as you're out running errands or something like that. Make time together a priority. That's gonna help you to feel more connected to him and that's gonna help him to be able to decompress and to pull out of being the officer. I think especially right now, it's so hard for them to turn off the officer and turn back on husband and father. There's so much weight on their shoulders right now and there's so much happening that I think a lot of them are really struggling with figuring out how to not be on duty do kind things for him, leave him little notes, maybe even just a little note on the bathroom mirror as he's getting ready, or leave out a treat for him when he gets home, or um, have his uniform freshly washed for him and ready to go, or um, make his favorite kind of cookies, or I don't know, anything like that. You know him best. Whatever it is that you know they would appreciate the most, do that for him. Show him that you're here. Show him that you support him. Show him that you care and that you love him. Police officers have an incredibly high divorce rate. And I think a big part of that is how insanely stressful their job is. And I think that we as spouses have a really important job to jump in and help them as much as we possibly can. Now, I'm not saying it's our responsibility to make sure they're happy at all times. I'm not saying it's our responsibility to fix everything for them or to serve them hand and foot. But I am saying our responsibility as wives is to show them how much we love them and how much we appreciate them and how much we respect them. It's not to just make their lives a cakewalk. <laughs> That's not, it's not the 1950s. That is not our responsibility. Okay, and my final thought that I have for today, number five, watch for red flags. So not only do police officers have a very high rate of divorce, there's also a very high rate of suicide. Obviously, we don't have control over what other people choose to do, and so please don't interpret what I'm saying that way. But we do have an opportunity and the ability to remind someone how important they are. And we do that through our actions. Same thing as what I was talking about through our relationship. We do service for them. We do kind things for them. We show them with the way we're treating them, how much we love them. Now, sometimes with the job, it gets to be too much for them. And there's, there's a lot that they have to carry. It's an incredibly heavy burden for them. Keep an eye on your loved one. Um, if you notice that they're disengaging a lot, maybe they're totally buried in their phone all the time. Maybe they aren't interacting with you or with the children like they normally would. Maybe they are so focused on being at work that they're not coming home. They're just working insane amounts of hours. Part of that, I think, is that if we are home as the wife and the children, if we're at home, he knows that we're safe. But if he's at home, he doesn't know if his brothers and sisters in blue are safe while they're at work because there's always someone there. There's always someone in the line of fire. And I think a lot of times they get this, this weight on their shoulders that they feel like they have to protect everyone that they love. And that includes all the other people at their department. And so they become consumed with work. They become consumed with protecting those people that they love. But in that process, they forget that the other people that they love are not getting what they need at home. Keep an eye out for being anxious. Keep an eye out for their personality changing. Like I know when my husband was really struggling right after the riots first kicked off, I 
went a few weeks where I didn't really see him smile and I didn't hear him laugh and that's so abnormal for him. He's a giant goofball. He's constantly joking and teasing and, and he's so much fun. And when I saw that he was not joking and he was not teasing the kids and he was not playing silly games and hiding behind the door and jumping out to scare the kid for a laugh, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't being his normal goofy self. If you're noticing these red flags, then help them. I know a lot of times they're gonna push you away. A lot of times they're gonna tell you they're fine, that they don't want help. Um, a lot of times they're not gonna tell you about situations at work. A big reason for that is gonna be when we recount a situation that we've been through, our brain doesn't know the difference from reality when we're actually living it and when we're retelling it. And so in our brains and in our emotions, for them to tell us what they've experienced at work, they have to mentally and emotionally go back to that place. And that can be incredibly difficult with a lot of the calls that they've been on. They don't want to relive it. And I don't blame them. So if they're having a hard time talking to you, that's completely normal. But if it's getting to a point where he is not being his normal self and he's completely withdrawn, then you need to find him help and you need to find it as quickly as possible. My husband, when I started seeing those red flags and I recognized that he was struggling more than he ever has before in his career. You guys, this was just a few months ago. This was back in, what was it, May? I, I saw those red flags, I saw all these things popping up that was not normal and I knew that something needed to give and he needed additional support that I couldn't provide. When I suggested that he talk to a professional, he told me no. And when I asked him why not, he didn't really want to talk about it. And when I told him I thought he needed to talk to a professional, he told me no. And he got kind of annoyed with me and a little bit upset, which is, again, not really like him. I knew that that as his wife and as someone who loves him, it was my responsibility to push the issue, to keep him safe. I messaged a couple other police wives. I got information about a couple different counselors that we could look into. I let him choose. He knew that I was going to do it. <laughs> he just knows me well enough to know that I see that this needs to happen and so it's going to happen. And there was no use in him fighting anymore because he knew it was coming anyway. <laughs> and so I let him choose which counselor and I called her and I said, hey, this is Laura. My husband is a police officer. He's been really struggling since that first protest. He needs your help. Can we set up an appointment? I went with him to that first appointment. It was really eye-opening to hear him talk without his guard up about things that he has seen and experienced. I didn't realize how much he had his guard up in the past with me as he told me the little bits that he did. I later found out from him that that was to protect me, that he loves me and he doesn't want me to be saddled with the same demons that he is. And that's why he didn't want to talk to me about it. They see things that people shouldn't have to see and have to process and have to deal with. And it would be weird if they didn't struggle with that. If they are at a point that they are just not themselves, get them that help, even if you have to push it. Because I promise that's so much better than any other outcome. Divorce or losing the one that you love. Okay, that was supposed to be my final thought, but I've got one more thought for you. Number six. I wasn't planning on a sixth, but here we are. Get to know police wives. Get to know other women in your area that are in the same situation. It's, it can be very isolating to be a police wife because we are dealing with situations that normal people don't deal with. Even though we're not on the streets, our husbands are. And so we get the, the fallout, basically, of of what they have to handle, what they have to deal with, that can be incredibly trying and incredibly heavy for us as the spouse. Get to know other people that have been there, that are there, that get it. Don't do this life alone. It's too heavy. It's, don't do it alone. Find support. And if you don't have support in your area, Message me anytime. I will be your support. I know I'm not physically near most of you, but I am more than happy to be your support if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you just need to vent because being a police wife is hard because it's hard. Let me know. Feel free to message me anytime. I am more than happy to chat and to share that burden with you for even just a few minutes. 
Police Wise, what other suggestions do you have? What did I miss that you would recommend in order to survive 2020 as a police wife? Because it's... <laughs> it's next level. <laughs> that was like a creepy laugh. That was like a... <laughs> oh gosh, I'm insane. It's fine. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I can't wait to get to know all of you guys better. And just so you guys know, every Monday at four o'clock, we are doing a live. We're gonna create an incredible community of people that are seeking kindness and happiness and joy in this crazy world that we live in. Four o'clock every Monday. Can't wait to see you there. Thank you guys for watching. Have a fantastic day, everybody. That Adam Mama, signing out.